Welcome to this uh, new uh, podcast of the Robustly Beneficial Group uh, in Lausanne. Today, we're going to discuss uh, a paper that has been widely shared, uh, especially in the effective altruism community. Uh, it is a paper called AI Safety via Debate, uh, co-authored by uh, Geoffrey Irving, uh, Paul Cristiano, uh, and Dario Amodei, uh, all from uh, OpenAI. Uh, so it was published in 2018, so it's uh, a year and a half now. And uh, yeah, so it's a paper so about the idea of uh, using debates to to guarantee uh, AI safety. Uh, Louis, do you want to describe it? Yeah. So the idea of a, of a debate is that uh, we we want to answer uh, we want answers to questions and we want uh, aligned answers. Uh, an aligned answer is would mean an answer that in a, that 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 is in our own interest. But sometimes. Uh, and we, we, it's possible that we, we are not able to come up with an aligned answer by ourselves. But if we are given an aligned answer, we, we somehow have the possibility to verify it. And even better, if we are given a, a debate between two uh, AI agents about a specific answer, or about uh, different answers, it's a, it can be even easier to, uh, to verify from these debates what, uh, what answer is the most uh, let's say truthfully aligned and, uh, and usefully aligned to us. Uh, so a quick example could be you want to, to know where is best for you to go on holidays. And so you ask uh, two AI debaters to, to give you an answer. They, can, they, they could propose uh, Alaska or Bali. And then uh, given simply this answer, you, you still uh, can't figure out where is best for you to go on holidays. But then, uh, then the, the, the two AIs would be would, would set up a debate, and they would try to uh, to give more arguments to explain uh, why their answer is better. So the first one could say that Bali is warmer than Alaska, so Alaska is better. But then the second one could answer uh, that you will need to have a specific uh, visa on your passport to go to Bali. Uh, argument to which the the, the first one could again uh, replicate that. Uh, the visa application only takes 20 minutes, so it will not be difficult. Uh, after this uh, debate that can take uh, any number of steps, we expect uh, uh, you as a judge to, to be uh, better at figuring out what is the, what is the proper uh, aligned answer to, to the question. Yep, so uh, I think there's uh, some interesting analogy with uh, what we know from computer science, uh, in particular com computational complexity theory, uh, where uh, there's this, uh, well, there are different classes of problem. One of them is like the, the polynomial class, which is about like uh, solving a problem, let's say, uh, or verifying something. Uh, and uh, it turns out that uh, you can have uh, more powerful uh, 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 algorithms if you can solve a so-called NP problem. So NP problem is a problem uh, where typically you need to search for a solution. And, uh, and so typically you can imagine that if there are two algorithms and one can uh, can prove that it understands more than the other just by sending the solution that it has computed, computed uh, using this way. And there are more uh, larger classes of, um, of, uh, of uh, abilities, of uh, capabilities of programs uh, known as uh, uh, as a IP class, so IP is uh, interactive uh, proof. Uh, I think it's oh, interactive polynomial, I don't know. But IP, anyways, like it's about the interactions of between uh, different algorithms. And using this, you can have proofs that are much more efficient. And uh, in particular, you can uh, solve not only NP problems, but even like uh, so called P space problems. Uh, and so the intuition of the authors is that uh, this uh, can be applied as well to uh, non-formal uh, problems. And essentially by interacting, you gain power. And that's, there would be a reason why um, having this sort of uh, interactions and uh, debates uh, could uh, add to the capabilities of, for instance, uh, algorithms proving to you that they are uh, more aligned or, or more powerful. Okay, and uh, another advantage of this, uh this framework is also that uh, it somehow it's, it feels easy to to implement in practice, and the reason is that uh, so 
the, the way we work uh, is that uh, AI systems should not simply be uh, able to answer questions, but also do the task of uh, pointing out flaws in, the, in answers. So if, if now we have just one algorithm, one artificial intelligence that can answer questions and point out flaws, you simply need to, to let this agent be trained by a self, self playing against itself or against a different version of itself. So, and uh, this is a technique that is very well known and mastered uh, for, for artificial intelligence. Uh, for example, this is how uh, the game of Go was beaten by having uh, one algorithm play against itself. Uh, and this is uh, very useful for training. So, uh, just to say yep. that this, this framework has some advantages, uh, in, uh, practical advantages. Yeah. Uh, so, so, the idea of uh, algorithms interacting with the user to, for, for everyone to, improve and particularly for the uh, for the human to be able to know what's wrong for instance with the algorithm how to improve upon it and or to verify that it's working properly is something that's already uh, widely deployed arguably like for instance if you have a, if you're programming in a, in the ide uh, uh, I don't know, remember what it means uh, but like uh, with a debugger for instance uh, of, uh, of, of your program yeah <laughs> thank you uh, then uh, well, you can think of this interaction with uh, the, the IDE as a, a way to uh, improve your capability and your ways to, to verify the, that the algorithm is, uh, that you're trying to design is doing what you want. You can query information, so it will be like the equivalent of asking questions. You can say, well, uh, could you stop here and tell me the value of this variable at this point, for instance. Uh, so, and, and this is a clearly a way that uh, improves uh, at least the, the the pace at which you can you, you can program uh, your your algorithms and improve upon it. So so yeah so so I think that there are advantages uh, of this, uh, but um, it's uh, debatable. So let's have a debate <laughs> uh, whether these are, are like actually uh, robust solutions to to AI safety and in particular to to alignment. Uh, so there, there's a lot of uh, such discussions in the paper. Uh, the, uh, the paper lists uh, actually in section five what they call reasons to worry, and maybe we can spend some time discussion discussing the first and second point, which, in my opinion, are like the the, the, the most problematic, which is the the, the human biases, like confirmation bias, etc., and then uh, the complexity of the debates being beyond what humans can read. For example, like you mentioned, the um, IP so interactive polynomial uh, in the in the introduction. Uh, this assumes like the uh, yeah, in 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 this in this debating framework. It seems very obvious that uh, humans will lag behind if the debate is is too long or too complex or too too many things to read to understand before making a judgment. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, I'm even more concerned about the, the first one, but uh, we can discuss the, the second one first. Uh, uh, like, for instance, uh, if you take a, a concrete example, like, for instance, uh, uh, what should be done about the coronavirus situation? Or, yeah, what should you be doing tomorrow? <laughs> should you stay at home? Um, yeah, yeah. So, so, like maybe this discussion is very, very uh, complex, and maybe even like the the right solution is something we as humans have not thought about yet. Uh, and just because, uh, and, and this maybe just because it's very complex, and you need to analyze a huge amount of data to get to this conclusion. And then, so if it's you not made, clear, uh, well, if you made uh, your whole career on a specific molecule, you would be tempted to say that this molecule is the cure. Yeah, so, so, like, so it would be more like the first point. Uh, first point, like conf confirmation bias. Mm -hmm. Like you have a yeah. disease where about 90-ish percent of people heal without nothing. So if you have a strong uh, bias towards believing that such or such molecule or such or such approach, so you'd have a lot of debates based on confirmation bias by people who wants to, com to validate what they believe. Yeah. In practice, it's uh, quite uh, horrible. Like uh, there are figures, for instance, about uh, uh, the correlation between the belief in some uh, uh, scientific consensus, for instance, uh, uh, human-made uh, climate change, yeah. or uh, should we worry about uh, the coronavirus situation? Yeah. Uh, 
the, the, these are like uh, there's a, uh, there's been a consensus among experts at some point mm -hmm. uh, about uh, there, there is a consensus uh, among experts on, on both of these, but it turns out that if you look uh, in the U.S., uh, what educated people believe, they tend to have opinions that are extremely dependent on the the party affiliation, in particular. Uh, uh, Republicans in this case are uh, more skeptical of climate change, if uh, human-made uh, climate change, if they are more educated, mm -hmm. uh, which is a, a bit uh, weird. And uh, similarly, uh, for the coronavirus situation, so I don't have this figure for the coronavirus situation, but uh, what I've seen is that uh, Republicans uh, are much more skeptical of the danger of the coronavirus than Democrats. Is it because Democrats are, are more or smarter? I, I don't think so. It's more because of probably some uh, confirmation bias, which is uh, very widely uh, mm -hmm. uh, well studied and uh, really established uh, uh, phenomenon by, uh, by psychology. Yeah, so one of the worries that uh, the AI is itself uh, trying to, to give more true answer and more, more useful information, they would simply try to uh, to manipulate us and play into our confirmation bias. And if we are in this scenario where the judge is a human and the two AIs are debating, most likely the AI playing best on the confirmation bias of the judge, uh, on, on, the, on what the judge already believes, will be the, the one that is selected. Uh, that's also uh, one thing that we haven't yet discussed and which is uh, somehow an assumption in the, in the paper. They expect that as a, as uh, AIs become better at debating, they will also uh, converge towards being uh, more honest. And uh, the reason uh, why, uh, why this could be uh, true is that uh, somehow they, if, if, if one of the agent is, uh, is trying to lie in the case of, a, of such a debate, if the, somehow it's very hard to win a debate if you have been lying because the, the other agent could point out, could easily point out what you lied about and then uh, win the debate in this way. But uh, this is only uh, an assumption of the, in, in the paper and uh, it, might be, uh, it might be not, uh, not true. Yeah, I'm very skeptical of this assumption, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, especially if the judge is a, is a human. Um, like I mean, lawyers are well known to 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 debate. Uh, and, well, like a lawyer debate is not necessarily uh, does not all, only give emphasis on on uh, Bayesian probability. Let's say, um, like if you want to to convince uh, humans in general, so it, it seems that there are like other strategies that are more useful by playing, for instance, uh, with emo uh, with emotions, with uh, confirmation bias. Uh, and other things like this, um, and uh, like we made the point also uh, when we talked about this paper that uh, uh, like even if the instead of a human you would have a, a Bayesian aligned uh, algorithm, then uh, honesty it would still need not, still not be clear that honesty would be uh, an optimal uh, strategy. Um, in fact, I would highly doubt, it, doubt this uh, because if it's, if it's a Bayesian algorithm, it's going to have a prior distribution. And if somehow there's a one agent that, uh, that because of some information that it has access to but cannot share it because it's uh, something it's seen and it, it, well, it has not a sign, signed proof of, uh, of, uh, of the data, uh, if you cannot prove this data, it can just talk about its own experience, exp uh, well, the data that it ha has been collecting uh, without proving that it has collecting this data. Uh, if it just has a posterior that's based on this, and if it, this posterior uh, turns out to be uh, unlikely according to the prior of the judge, then it will be extremely hard for, for it to, to, to make the case for, for itself. And uh, in particular, it would probably lose against uh, another uh, algorithm that's just uh, saying what's most likely according to the judge. Um, yeah, so there would be lies that the judge would think are more likely than, uh, than the truth. Yeah. And uh, the, the malicious uh, debater can, uh, can use these specific lies yeah. and, uh, and, be, uh, and beat the, the honest debater. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, and this is all because of uh, if you're trying to be Bayesian, you need to have this prior distribution on the judge. Um, so of course we can dis dis debate uh, <laughs> Bayesianism, but uh, uh, well, I think uh, the authors are pretty convinced, I'm guessing, that uh, Bayesianism is uh, an important way to go at least, and having priors is important. Uh, and if you have a prior, then you're more likely to believe some things than others. Uh, and that's the laws of probabilities, like it's not uh, about, uh, yeah. Yeah, so somehow it, it seemed to solve the question that, uh, so the question whether the agent will converge towards the uh, optimal strategy, which are uh, being honest or, or will not, is somehow reduced to the question whether it's more easy to lie or to, or to defend against some specific lie. And, uh, and if I understand well, uh, your point is that if the judge is a, is a Bayesian, then it will depend on the lie. There, there, there will be lies that uh, are very likely given the prior of the judge. Yeah. And, uh, and for these specific lies, the, the refutation of the lie would most likely be uh, very unlikely. Yeah. And, uh, and in that case, it would be a case where it's uh, easier to lie than uh, refute the lie. So, so, all right, what we said about uh, uh, confirmation bias and also uh, about uh, whether to lie or not to lie is actually also something that's mentioned in the paper that is uh, quite scary about this kind of framework is that uh, imagine these two, two uh, super intelligent uh, artificial intelligence that uh, are working towards not, um, not maximizing uh, being aligned, but maximizing convincing the judge that they are aligned. And uh, if, yeah. if uh, we discuss also something, uh, the, we also often discuss good at law. And, uh, and this is something really to, to take into account that, that wh what is the objective function of this agent? Uh, we want the objective function to be uh, being aligned. But unfortunately, within this framework, the objective function is convincing uh, the human judge that they are aligned. So, and this makes a big difference. Um, so that, that's why you said, uh, when we discuss this, that uh, it, it would be a great framework if the human judge is robustly uh, aligned himself, yeah. which is not uh, something we expect. Yeah, the, the judge needs to be both aligned and uh, and, and and good <laughs> and performant uh, because um, if he's just aligned but uh, is not very good at understanding the, the, the different arguments and applying Bayesul to infer what is more likely and what is not, then probably uh, if you have these two algorithms trained to win debates judged by this human, mm -hmm. They will try to, or this algorithm could be also an algorithm. Then they will exploit the vulnerabilities of the judge, as opposed to trying to be honest. So, uh, of all the framework, uh, I, I don't think is very robust at all. Uh, I feel that there are so many things that can go wrong, and the conditions to make it go uh, fairly well, I'd say. Uh, are essentially creating a judge that is already robustly and aligned and very performant. Which boils uh, down which I feel the is, algorithm being aligned and performant. Yeah, so... Because a judge is just a protocol. I yeah. So, so I don't think this problem uh, solves the alignment uh, problem at all, mm -hmm. because it seems to really require alignment to be effective. Yeah. And even then, uh, it's not clear to me that it's going to be effective. Okay. Yeah, and uh, and the second uh, weakness of this was also the, the scalability, that the uh, human, uh, if if the judge is human, he cannot uh, understand questions that are way too complex and uh, way too long, or he also cannot uh, judge uh, too many questions per day because we are we are limited. And for this, uh, this is again something we discussed in the we built AI paper that the way that we could solve this is by uh, having a, an intermediary and uh, giving to every uh, judge uh, an algorithmic representative that will uh, learn to imitate uh, the judge and, uh, and uh, vote and make decisions instead of the judge. Um, that's also a similar idea that uh, uh, Paul Christian uh, discussed in the paper called uh, iterated amplification uh, framework which is also a similar idea to, to what they propose here with the debates, which is that uh, uh, the iterative amplification framework starts with a, 
one uh, aligned agent with low capabilities and uh, with, with some method uh, they amplify, they, they make this agent uh, better and uh, high, with higher capabilities and uh, they were also under the assumption that uh, if the original agent is aligned similarly to when in this case the judge is aligned then the, the more capable agent would be aligned and uh, when we discussed it a long time ago before the podcast we were also not uh, fully convinced by the robustness of this uh, technique yeah like i feel th these techniques uh, can uh, improve capabilities or at least it does in the case of uh, of the game of go uh, and that's interesting in its own sake I, I, I see this as a way to do faster computation essentially uh, because you could always simulate the whole things and, and these mm -hmm. are all just like accelerations of the computations uh, which are still important but um, there are, I think uh, there are two flaws I'd say uh, one of them is you still need to do some uh, some uh, inference from the data uh, so you like this is adding capability uh, to solve a task that is already well defined but uh, in machine learning and uh, probably to build powerful algorithms you also need to get a lot of data and do inference from this data uh, i don't think this is uh, tackling this problem and the other thing is the problem of alignment uh, like I, I don't see a good argument for why this system would be a robust uh, way to preserve alignment um, like in the case of the game of Go, uh, alignment is easy because uh, the, the objective of the algorithms in the game of Go is very simple, is to win the game and we know we can write easily an algorithm that tells uh, whether uh, one of the player won or not. Uh, mm -hmm. But in real life application of algorithms that want to make robustly beneficial, I think the problem of alignment is a lot harder like determining what the YouTube recommender should recommend to different people. It's so complicated and so context dependent. Like we talked about the coronavirus situation, uh, like because of the coronavirus situation, how YouTube should have recommended a lot of videos uh, that were uh, explaining the importance of washing your hands and such like this very early on in uh, the coronavirus crisis. But just to know this was extremely hard. Like, and most people were not convinced by, by the need to, to wash your, uh, their hands. And so you needed the algorithm to understand this, even though most people did not understand this. Uh, and this requires a lot of techniques that I don't feel are addressed by this kind of, uh, uh, of approach. One of the only uh, reason for me to see that uh, you could still, uh, so the way to solve alignment is that because uh, they expect the judge to be aligned. And uh, yep. and then uh, I think one of the most interesting things is that it's more easy to to judge something based on a debate than it is solely based on the on the answers. So that's why it uh, somehow this uh, debating framework was uh, is better than simply uh, receiving uh, answers from one single agent. Uh, if we yeah, uh, so I also think it's, uh, it's 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 true in practice. I would somehow prefer to see a list of uh, positive and, uh, and negative uh, arguments against uh, one question to, to help me figure out what is, uh, what is the correct answer. Seems, uh... Yeah, I, I guess it does have some application for, uh, so if you take the framework of Rebuild AI, at some point you need to design your algorithmic representatives. Uh, and uh, one way to go, which was uh, what was done by Rebuild AI, is to have uh, uh, different options, different algorithms. So uh, in the Webuild AI framework, there was this machine learning algorithm that was based on your pairwise comparisons of, of alternatives. And there was this other model that you built yourself uh, using like uh, rules, like if, and then and stuff like this. Uh, and you wanted to compare these two algorithms. Uh, so these are very simple algorithms, so I guess comparing them was not that difficult. Uh, and so what they did is uh, they, they show an example, they ask the user's uh, uh, preference for, for this uh, example of, uh, of uh, ethical dilemma. And they also uh, show the opinions of the different algorithms. Uh, so I guess this is a very uh, basic kind of debate. Like everybody's just seeing what they think and in the end the, the human judge, judges. But, uh, there may be some interesting research to be done in trying to 
use this framework in more complex settings. Uh, so for instance, uh, you can imagine uh, everyone trying to design uh, his own, um, uh, th their own uh, algorithmic representatives to moderate uh, YouTube videos. And maybe uh, there would be different uh, algorithmic uh, candidates for, for being the representatives. And uh, maybe you could have a more sophisticated discussion well, maybe one algorithm say, I think this should be uh, censored because uh, uh, it's uh, uh, incorrect here and it's about coronavirus and it's very important. And maybe the other can, 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 can then say, well, actually it's aligned with what the World Health Organization is saying and stuff like this. So maybe there's uh, some interest in this kind of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of framework, but uh, uh, I would stress again the fact that I don't think this is uh, sufficient at all. Especially if you want the the human judge to be uh, to be saying the end word, because uh, humans are easily uh, hackable to to use the words of uh, of Yuval Noah Harari. Uh, yeah, we we have a lot of uh, cognitive flaws. I would quite agree with you that um, there are like a lot of points where uh, what the paper proposed boils down to solving alignment in an algorithmic manner in the first place. Coming back to the judge example. Yeah, so I, I guess this paper is also uh, interesting. Um, like the, the ideas in the paper have to do more, I think, with explainability than with alignment. Um, like in the end, I think alignment is what's most important, but if you want to get to alignment, I think interpretability, it can be extremely useful to know what your algorithm is doing and to verify, for instance, that it is indeed aligned. Um, and well, that, that this is a, a lot what the we build uh, uh, AI uh, paper uh, did when they, uh, they they had these algorithmic representatives that people could test and uh, play with, uh, and I think this is like uh, extremely important uh, moving on. Uh, but yeah, again, I don't think that this paper is uh, is very relevant to alignment per se, uh, which I still think is the most important point. Uh. Uh, next week, we will uh, discuss uh, another paper called multi arm Bandit for the design of uh, clinical trials. It's not directly relevant to the field of AI safety, but it's uh, very relevant to... Well, actually, I think it is very relevant to the field of AI safety. It's extremely relevant. For example, if you go back to the paper <laughs> on emotional contagion, yeah, uh, that's, so uh, clinical trials, having safe protocols for clinical trials, for sequential clinical trials, uh, could have mean uh, could have me made that research more more robust and more beneficial while controlling the harm the potential harm it can have on the users so it is it is very relevant to the field of AI safety as we will try to convince you next week all right yeah. I think and, I'm convinced. Uh, and it is very timely actually uh, since its um, initial motivation was not from AI but from clinical trial mm -hmm. and uh, now we are in a situation where people are facing dilemmas on uh, what to try and uh, volunteers are scarce. So now, uh, like yesterday, Fran French agencies reported that they are struggling to recruit volunteers. So um, you don't want to harm these volunteers, obviously, and you want to have the clinical trial as safe as possible and as meaningful as possible to get the results. Uh, so it is both timely uh, in the context of the spread of COVID-19, but it's also very relevant uh, in the in context of AI safety when it comes to large-scale deployments of algorithms on users. And on the same time, you, you want to deploy an algorithm and you want to have a, a sequential uh, deployment of policies. Um, so we'll try to yeah, convince... It's retackling that, that, re that, re the problem of philosophy with a deadline. Yeah, so this is critical. <laughs> it need, needs something like 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 multi bandit solutions and and how to like this question how to design clinical trials so you want to do it fast you are in a tight deadline uh, and you don't want to harm the the volunteers who are there for the clinical trial and in this situation is the same as what what you social media is facing they want to try things to see what, what is the most attractive to users, but in the same time, you don't want to. All right, join us next week for uh, our next discussion. Uh, it will be very exciting. See you. Bye.